Hello and welcome. This is Susan Knowles. I'm a doctoral student at Frontier Nursing University. Today I'll be discussing an instructional methodology, the VODCAST. Through the course of this VODCAST, I hope to answer the following questions. Who is the audience? What does the literature say? What is a VODCAST? And how will VODCAST be used in teaching the audience? The learners are novice nursing clinical instructors, and these are nurses that have decided to become a nurse educator in order to make a difference. And it's not unusual for the novice clinical nurse educator to be unsure of what the role requires. However, after being an expert in their staff positions, it's not long before they realize that they know nothing about being an educator or combining the role of educator and nurse. All nursing programs should require a clinical nursing instructor preparation course for novice nursing instructors. Although the nurses are experts in clinical practice, this does not necessarily equate to a proficient clinical instructor. In accordance with the Arizona State Board of Nursing, to be a clinical nursing instructor, the minimum requirements are an unobstructed current nursing license in the state of Arizona or a compact state at least three years of clinical experience and a bachelor's degree in nursing. So what does the literature say? I've put the title of each of the research articles in yellow at the top of each slide. And in this study, Schreibner, Fukoda, and Gordon performed a mixed method crossover randomized control trial of 100 medical students randomized to live lecture and video podcasts. The purpose of the study was to compare information recall after live lecture and video podcast, as well as obtain some qualitative data regarding the students' preferences and experiences with the two formats. The results did not show any difference on multiple choice question scores. However, the students did express a preference for live lectures. Some students stated that they did enjoy, excuse me, enjoy the convenience of the video podcast and the ability to stop rewind and repeat. In the next study, Narula Ahmed and Rudakowski in 2012 conducted a pilot study utilizing a questionnaire which included seven Likert type questions with one multiple choice and two open-ended questions. The questionnaire sought to determine the efficacy, usability, and time effectiveness of five minute video podcasts to be used by medical students while on call in an Ontario hospital, and as well as prior to completing a patient assessment. The results revealed strong agreement among the respondents that the video podcasts were effective, appropriate for their educational needs, and saved time. And in fact, their prep time decreased from 19 minutes to 11 minutes. If you'd like to see a sample vodcast, Click on the picture of the 5-Minute Medicine webpage on the right side of the screen. In the third study, Walker, Kotner, and Bierman in 2011, using a pre- and post-test non-equivalent group design of students in two sections of an introductory level biology, excuse me, biology course, sought to compare the difference between student achievement and their preference between two formats of the supplementary materials, either a vodcast or a class lecture capture. Both formats in this study were described as combining visual and auditory information in a single multimedia package that can be delivered over the web. The authors state the difference between the two in this study were that vodcasts are custom designed and produce materials that combined video, audio, still images, and animation into an interactive module intended to supplement the content delivered in the class meetings. The class captures, by contrast, are recordings of the video and audio content of the actual class meeting, and they do not supplement uh, the course content so much as repeat it. The difference in the vodcast were that the instructors when they created the vodcast, created the content that was specific to their past experience where students struggled with the material. This study contends that students who use custom vodcasts are likely to outperform students who use class captures 
if the vi viewing is close to the time of the exam related to the targeted nature of the vodcast. While students preferred the customized vodcast, there was no significant difference found between the two groups in their final course grade. The authors state that given that the vodcast can be time consuming and more costly to create, that if class capture system is available to the instructor, this may be just as effective a format for student success. Kumar in 2009, using a 10 question questionnaire, six Likert type and four open ended, investigated fifth year medical students' perceptions of podcasts with added visual effects. The podcast had been improved using voiceover PowerPoint. The study was conducted over only two months. During this period, over 5,000 podcast episodes were downloaded. Of the 211 students completing the questionnaire, only six students did not plan to use them. Only 96 or 46 percent of the 211 students at the time of the questionnaire had viewed the podcasts. Of those 96 students, they reported that the resource was easy to use, easily accessible, free, and that one could learn anywhere. They also stated both visual and audio is better than a podcast. Students requested more topics, adding a quiz at the end of the podcast, and that they would like a copy of the PowerPoint to make them better. Angen, Kusara, and Koyoko in 2010 investigated the impact of class lecture webcast on students' attendance and learning using a quasi-experimental design. The study was conducted using two course sections of a university geology course in the southwest area of the United States. The sample was composed of 303 students. 136 had access to webcast and 167 students did not. The students were not randomized. They self-enrolled without prior knowledge of the experience. Excuse me, experiment. The one course section was allowed access to a password protected lecture webcast defined as streaming audio visual broadcast over the web and the other section of the students was not allowed webcast access. All other resources, instructors, class time, and demographics for the student groups were similar or the same. The study used attendance data, performance data, and end of the semester student surveys to gather data. The study aim was to find out how webcasting affected students' actual class attendance, performance, perceived effectiveness for learning, and why and how they use webcasts. The results indicated a positive relationship between student performance and webcasts. Students perceive webcasting as a positive learning experience. While students with webcast access attended class less often, the study did not find any difference between the two groups in their overall course grade point averages. So what are vodcast? They are a combination audio and visual file. Typically using voiceover PowerPoint slides, they can be downloaded to a computer or any mobile device, which provides any time, any place opportunities for learning. The video file can be any combination of YouTube videos and clips, diagrams and pictures to augment the audio presentation. Video podcasting may enhance learning because they utilize both visual and audio channels. Additionally, being able to both pause and repeat the vodcast can give the learner more opportunities to make sense of the information. Some studies have cited disadvantages of vodcast as being time consuming, costly to produce, and lack interaction. However, today's technology using PowerPoint and free website hosting makes this learning modality cost effective, easy to create, easy for the viewer to access on both computers and mobile devices anytime. Vodcast can be extremely valuable for students that miss a lecture if they need to look something up and repeat sections that they do not understand. Additionally, this type of technology is relatively easy to create using PowerPoint with an audio recording of the lecture material. No special software is needed and it can be housed on either a university learning management system or on a free website. 
vodcasts are particularly helpful when information needs to be repeated several times and to delivered to many different groups of people. This method can be extremely helpful for people who may be too busy to attend class. Why are they relevant? Well, Peters and Boylston in 2006 suggested that preparation courses can be offered web-based as an alternative or in conjunction with a face-to-face -face course. Novice clinical instructors are most often part-time adjunct or associate faculty with a full-time staff job or maybe they're a nurse practitioner in a clinic. Because of family and work-related demands, they cannot attend a multi-day face-to-face preparation course prior to the beginning of a clinical rotation. And often it's even difficult to just arrange a one-day, six to eight hour orientation for new faculty because of these other demands. So why are VODCAST appropriate? Because they're always available. They can be repeated, paused to take notes, and reviewed for more difficult material. The Cochise College Nursing Program has garnered good success with using VODCAST for the necessary staff nurse orientations before the students' preceptorships. VODCAST have been selected for this project because they have been well received, are easily accessible, are convenient, and have been successful for the staff nurse preceptor orientations. VODCasts are used by educators in all levels, from elementary to schools of higher learning. They are used in business for both education and advertisement. Hospitals use VODCasts for the orientation of new employees, which can be found by a simple Google search using the search term hospital orientation. The clinical instructor preparation course will be designed utilizing the principles of adult learning theory based on the assumptions that adults are self-directed, they are goal and relevance oriented and they need to see how this new knowledge can be applied. The course will be designed with the intention that only one vodcast will be viewed each week. The modules will be self-paced appropriate for the self-directed adult learner. They will be sequentially building on previously learned material from week to week and will be completed gradually as the instructor teaches a group of students rather than all modules front end loaded. Only relevant, practical, need to know information for the beginning clinical instructor will be included in the series of modules. In conclusion, five studies were reviewed for this assignment. One mixed method crossover randomized control trial, one quasi experimental design, and three questionnaire type studies. All studies had similar findings when comparing audiovisual podcasts or sometimes called webcasts, to live lecture, to audio-only podcasts, to other types of resources, to class lecture capture, and to one student group with access to webcasts compared to a second student group without webcast access. All studies reported positive student perceptions with the use of the audiovisual podcasts, Students agreed that vodcasts were convenient, that they could be paused and repeated, were easy to access, and appropriate for learning. Students in two studies reported that having visual and audio was better than audio only. In one study, the students reported audio-visual podcasts as less engaging. However, in another study, the students suggested adding a quiz at the end of the podcast and having a copy of the PowerPoint would make them better. Three studies looked at student achievement and found that students performed equally well when using audiovisual podcasts. Instructors can easily create a vodcast by adding voice to PowerPoint, then uploading it to a learning management system or a free website. This makes this instructional modality easily accessible for the learner when and where they want it and supports adult learning theory. Thank you for joining me on this vodcast and a complete list of references is available in a Word document format.